Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Before we get too far into the video, I'd like to ask you to hit that like button. It really helps my channel and it helps my video. It helps other people to find my channel and for me to grow my community here. So today we're gonna to be going over some natural dyeing with matter. Matter actually comes from a root and I'm gonna be using an extract from the root. So it's a powder form, but um, matter is usually kind of like a red color. Matter has been used for over 3000 years and it's pretty easy to dye with. It's a classic natural dye and I had a lot of fun making this really nice shibori pattern with it. If you're interested in learning more about natural dyes, I recommend this book, Wild Color by Jenny Dean. It's um, a really great book and it has all kinds of different natural dyes in it. And it talks all about mordants and different modifiers and different things you can do to play around with the color of the vat and all the different kinds of fibers for dyeing. So I'll put the link for this book down in the description below, along with all the supplies I'm gonna be using in today's video. Before we get too far into the video, I wanna take a minute to say thank you to Skillshare. Skillshare is a really awesome membership-based website where you can watch videos on how to do all kinds of things. I like to watch their videos on tech stuff and entrepreneur stuff, as well as arts and crafts. They have all kinds of sewing tutorials. I have multiple dyeing videos on there and you can join Skillshare for a one month free with the links in my description down below. I watch Skillshare videos all the time while I'm doing crafts and working in my studio. It helps to keep me inspired and get new ideas all the time. So go ahead and check out that link and try Skillshare today. So now without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so I'm gonna start with three yards of pre-washed cotton fabric, paint sticks for folding and for stirring, metal clamps, an iron and an ironing board, potassium alum, a stock pot that I only use for dyeing, a hot plate, gloves to protect my hands. I have heavy duty and lighter duty, a dusk mask, matter dye. And again, I'm using an extract. I'll put that down in the description below, a large glass jar, a plastic tray and center pole for washing. I'm using an old top sheet that is about a queen size and I'm just cutting it in half. I like to upcycle sheets. They make great things to dye and I'm going to just start to accordion fold it into a long rectangle. This one is about six to seven inches wide and I'm just doing the uh, length of half of the sheet. So I'm just going to carefully accordion fold it and iron each time I fold. It's hard to fold a really large piece of fabric. There's just no way around it. And I recommend just going slowly and ironing and taking your time. I have another video about folding and dyeing large pieces of fabric with indigo and I'll link that down in the description below and put a card here for you guys in case you want to check that out. So I'm going to just continue to accordion fold it into a square and then I'm going to take my paint sticks and sandwich the fabric in between. I'm putting them on a diagonal of the square. Sorry my camera was not exactly correctly positioned for this part but I'm going to clamp it with these heavy duty metal clamps. Now, when I'm doing vat dyeing that applies heat, which this is going to be, I don't want to use anything plastic. I've made that mistake before and it gets warped. So I'm using these metal clamps. These metal clamps may affect the color of the dye bath, but I'm okay with it. So it's all folded up and it's ready to go. 
The next thing I'm going to do is mix up my mordant. For this project, I actually just used some alum that I had mixed up and saved from an old project. I mixed this up for the lac dyeing video that I made. I'll put that down in the description below. It's a really pretty purple color and it comes from the same company that made this matter dye. It's a very nice color and a really nice dye, easy to work with. The instructions for this dye say to use 12% of the weight of the fabric for the alum. And I just weighed the fabric and then um, converted it to grams because I'm in the US and then I um, could figure out easily 12% of the weight and then add that to the water. So I am setting up my dye station outside and here is the old uh, alum that I have. I just store it in a glass jar and I'm going to add my fabric and the alum to the stock pot and I just want to get it nice and wet and let the heat start to uh, prep the fabric. All right, so my piece has been sitting in the alum for about half an hour. I'm gonna go check on it now. So this piece is a little too big for this stock pot. So what I did was just flip the piece over so that the bottom could sit in the alum for another half an hour. In hindsight, I probably should have added more water and more alum, but it ended up working out fine. So here it is after it's been simmering on the other side and I'm gonna pour it into this plastic bucket. It's not boiling, it's just hot. So I'm going to put the piece into this plastic tray and then just pour the alum on top so it can sit flat and I let it soak for about an hour. So the fabric is nice and saturated and it's been soaking for an hour. I've filled up my stock pot completely with water and I've got it turned up too high. I don't want it to boil, but I want it to simmer and I'm going to mix up my dye now. This is the brand of dye I'm using, Sadani Biotech, and it comes from India. This is Rubia, also known as Matter. I will put the information for this dye down in the description below. The instructions suggest using 5% of the weight of the fabric for the dye, but it says that you can make it lighter or heavier depending on if you want it to be a lighter color or a darker color. So I decided to just use two heaping tablespoons and see how it looked. I figured if I needed to add more dye, I could, and that this would be a good starting point. So after I put the dye in, I just mixed it up and made sure that I got all of the clumps out. So I'm using my stir stick and I'm just going and making sure it's getting completely mixed in. And this is cold water at this point, so I'm just going to let it heat up and get completely mixed. So here it is, it's looking a lot more stirred up, and I'm actually going to do a little bit of an experiment and add one of these copper scrubbing pads that I had. It's an old one, and instead of just throwing it out, I just saved it, and I'm going to add it to the dye bath. So different metals can affect the dye bath, and I just wanted to try adding this one. You can also buy granule um, metals and add it that way, but I just had this lying around, so I figured let's see what it does. So now it's completely mixed up and it's simmering, and I'm going to add my fabric to the dye bath. And like I said, it only fits about half of the fabric in, so I'm going to turn it from time to time. Okay, so it's been about an hour and I'm gonna see what it looks like and turn it around now. So you can see I'm getting some nice color on the bottom of the piece and I'm gonna just turn it over. The dye bath has evaporated a bit, so I will add some more water just to top it off. You can kind of see it's getting a really nice orangey color. It ended up not being so orange at the end. So I just checked it every hour and kept turning it and adding more water to the dye bath just to make sure that the piece is covered. I let this simmer all day essentially and um, I just kept checking on it from time to time. 
So after letting it simmer all day, I just let it sit overnight and cool off. And I'm going to be using this jar to save the matter solution. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I figured I'll just save it and maybe I'll use it in a future project. I found the copper at the bottom of the dye vat and I'm just going to rinse out my pot and um, just make sure that this is nice and clean before I put it away. So now is the moment of truth. This is the most exciting part of any dye project. And I'm just going to start to rinse it with some cold water to get the excess dye out. And then I'm going to open it up and see what the pattern is. So it looks like it's very red orange, especially in this lighting in my laundry room. I don't have the best lighting. Um, and normally I always associated matter with being kind of like a brownish, reddish, orangish color. But once I washed it, it was a little bit more pink. And I really like that this dye is such a pretty color. After I rinsed it, I washed it on hot with Synthropol or Dyer's detergent. And then I dried it on hot to set the dye. All right, here it is, guys. It is hanging up on my door because it's so big I can't really get a good shot of it but it's a really nice color it's like a soft sort of corally pinky color and then I've got some reds in here I'm really happy with this color I wasn't sure if it was going to be really orange but it's really nice and it's going to be a garment I'm going to make something out of it but I'm not exactly sure what I should make out of it let me know in the comments what you think this would be cool as. Maybe like a, a shirt or a dress, it's woven, so I have to make something appropriate for it, but I'm in love with this fabric and this pattern. It's really cool, so be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and give me some love in the comments. All right, see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for a new video every Thursday. You can follow me on my social medias at Onyx Art Studios and check out my online dyeing workshops on my website onyxartstudios.com. Be sure to sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new date of a workshop or a new announcement. If you enjoyed this video, here are some other videos that I think you might enjoy. Be sure to check out my channel for more tutorials about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!